Michigan State. Unfortunately for the Spartans, most of the talk has been off the field. And here's a timeline of the events that have led up to all the discussion surrounding this program right now. An alleged sexual assault involving football student athletes taking place January the 16th, followed by the start of an external investigation. And on February 9th, the suspensions of three players and staff member Curtis Blackwell. University police then requested arrest warrants a week later, and just about two weeks ago, the Ingham County Prosecutor's Office began its review, though charges have still yet to be filed, and they just released a statement saying they do not expect those charges to be filed before the spring game is played this weekend. Matt Charbonneau covers the Spartans for the Detroit News. Uh, Matt, let's start with a developing story. News broke this morning that Curtis Blackwell, a suspended staffer, was actually given a contract extension during his suspension. What can you tell us about that story? Yeah, at, at this point, it's really more of a formality. A, a one-month extension was given. And the reason they did that is uh, his contract was set to expire at the end of this week. And when you're uh, under suspension, uh, that that's kind of one of the things the university can do. It's really just a policy to, uh, that, that they can enact as that suspension's ongoing. And then, of course, it still is right now. So they opted to go ahead and extend it for another month uh, while, while this whole investigation is, is kind of still in the progress of being figured out. Matt, I know you were in attendance to listen to Mark D'Antonio on Tuesday, really his first public comments since the suspensions of his three players. What was the tone of that conversation between D'Antonio and the media? Well, I mean, it, it, there was certainly tension. There's no doubt about that. We, we in the media haven't talked to Mark really since signing day, and that goes back to February 1st. And a lot of this is, is expected. I mean, when, when you have an investigation going on, you understand there's not a lot he's going to be able to talk about, uh, just, uh, you know, legally. Uh, the, the issue was we hadn't heard anything other than a written statement uh, since spring practice had begun. So he wanted to kind of get out there and, and, and speak to us before the spring game on Saturday so that w when we did kind of get back together Saturday, it could be about football because he wanted to, to be very clear on Tuesday this week that this is a serious matter and he didn't want to trivialize it uh, by asking, you know, who the starting quarterback was or, or who your offensive line is going to be or what a depth chart is. So he just wanted to get out and answer as many questions as he could on it. Now, granted, with the investigation ongoing, he couldn't say a whole lot, but he just wanted to kind of get across that it's a serious issue. It's not business as usual, as he said. Uh, for them, they have to go through spring practice, but this is this is the priority now is kind of figuring out this investigation and where they go from there. So it was tense, but uh, yeah, I think it was kind of something he had to do at this point. Matt, how serious do you think Mark and that staff were about canceling or changing the format of this weekend's spring game? It, yeah, it doesn't sound like they thought about it too much. Uh, you know, there's a lot that goes into a spring game. You know, they, they have a youth clinic there. It's a big recruiting weekend. Uh, so there are a lot of things that would have been hurt by not having it. Um, you, you do sit there and say people are going to look out and say who's not out there. And Mark said this week there are other players suspended for things completely unrelated to the investigation, uh, which he wouldn't get into. So the problem there is you might be looking at a lot of guys and you're wondering who's, who's you know, suspended for what. So there are issues with it. Uh, but according to him, it wasn't a, something that was thought of real seriously, maybe discussed briefly with he and the administration, but they decided fairly quickly that they were going to move forward with it. There's no question, Matt. You make a great point. Folks are going to be watching as much to see who doesn't play as they do look to see who actually does play. So the question then becomes, after the game, if this thing isn't settled with the suspended players, how much more will we likely know on Saturday evening than we know now? Yeah, not, not all that much, to be perfectly honest with you, because if you look at the guys who aren't out there and start asking about their position and depth charts, then you wonder how much they're going to be able to say, uh, depending on who's involved in that investigation and who isn't. So other than the guys we actually see out there playing, uh, I, you know, we're not going to know a whole lot more. Yeah, if you see, you know, Brian Lewerke playing quarterback and he plays well, you can talk about how well he plays. Beyond that, you're going to be kind of short on, on, on a lot of things. And it's, again, without it being out, you know, completed and without charges or lack of charges being announced, there's still not much they're going to be able to say. So it, it can be very narrow football-related in terms of guys who are out on the field. But beyond that, it's going to be tough to get a whole lot of answers even after Saturday's game. Matt, I know it's hard to quantify, but how much do you think this entire situation, the suspensions, the injuries to players you mentioned, transfers of other players for things that happen inside the locker room, 
How much has this impacted the program as a whole over the past four to six weeks? I, I would say a significant amount. It's, um, it, you know, when you consider the investigation, they've, they've had players leave. They've had, uh, you know, some early entries to the draft. There's all sorts of things that go on, other, other injuries. It, it, it's not, I hate to go back to his same phrase, but to think it's business as usual, I think, would be naive, especially coming off a of three and nine season. I mean, there's so much that was going to make this spring a big deal for Michigan State if you just looked on the field. Now with all these off-the-field issues, it, 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 it's been different. And I asked Mark about that. He's, he's talked about chemistry being a big part of their success over the years. And I asked how much do they have to work to kind of repair that. And, and he said that he admitted there is work to be done, but that's, he believes that's what he's seeing. He's seeing a, a program kind of come together and try and work to get back to that. And it's not going to be easy because there's a lot of stuff going on, but uh, that's clearly their goal right now. And maybe Saturday will be the first indication that they're at least kind of heading in that direction. All right. Lastly, Matt, a football related question at the very least. How much can we actually evaluate this team after Saturday? How much does Saturday actually matter as we start to prepare for the 2017 season? What Michigan State might have, what they may not have? Well, I mean, I think you're going to get at least some answers because, you know, I already mentioned the quarterback spot is. As Mark D'Antonio said at the, you know, in December, that Brian Lewerke's his guy at quarterback going in, you know, and he's coming off an injury. So you're going to, at the very least, get to see how healthy is he and how does he perform. He got a lot of questions uh, up front, both the offensive and defensive lines. Um, they're replacing guys in the, in the linebacker position, in the secondary. So you're at the very least going to get some idea of who some of these guys are to step in and fill some of those holes. Now, again, you're going to be playing basically an inter squad game. So you know, it's not like playing a Big Ten game, but at least you're going to have some idea of who you're going to look to, to to be some of those guys. So you won't get clear answers, but at least you'll have some indication going into the offseason and preseason camp who you're going to be looking at. All right, Matt Charbonneau of the Detroit News on a spring truly like no other in East Lansing. Matt, truly appreciate the time. You got it, Rick.